Hello again. Uh, we're on location today. I've come out to Calderstones Park um, in the south of Liverpool, which I have featured before in a few different uh, videos. Um, really, this video is all about the um, Olympus 30 millimeter macro lens. Uh, this park, as is common, I'm sure, with a lot of other ones up and down the country, very popular with dog walkers, so you'll have to uh, ignore the yelps and barks if you hear any in the background. Um, and it is also an incredibly windy day today, as you can probably see by the trees around me. So hopefully it's a test as well for the little um, Hollyland mic. Olympus 30mm macro. Um, first of all, why did I buy this particular one and not the 60mm? Well, point number one is price. There's a massive difference in price between the two lenses. Admittedly, the 60mm is uh, a pro-grade lens. Um, it's weather sealed uh, uh, and everything. Um, the 30mm, on the other hand, is not weather sealed. It is basically a plastic construction. It does have a metal lens mount but there's no weather sealing gasket around the uh, mount itself. So you need to be careful with this if you're caught out in a thunderstorm. Apart from the price, the main reason I went for this as opposed to the 60 is that I feel this will make a good all purpose, general purpose lens as well as being macro. 30 mil means that a full frame equivalent is 60 mil which is just a little bit longer than a standard lens. Whereas if I had gone for the 60 mil, that translates to 120 mil, which is for me too long to use as a general purpose lens. So that ruled it out. The 60 mil of course is slightly faster than this. At 3.5, it's not gonna set any records, but it's fast enough for me. When it comes to the nitty gritty, um, I've taken a number of shots with this over the past two or three weeks, and I'm staggered by it, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, the results uh, when using it as a general purpose lens, in other words, you know, fairly long distance shots, are terrific. Um, it's super sharp edge to edge. With regard to its image quality with um, macro shots, it's mind blowing really. Uh, it will give you a maximum magnification of 1.25 times, which because you have to double it uh, on a full frame camera equates to two and a half times life size, which is crazy. It's, it's the most magnification you can get without purchasing a, a lens that has, you know, extension tubes or other accessories to magnify the image further. You don't need to do anything else with this. Two and a half times magnification straight out of the box. Crazy. Um, in terms of its construction, it's really quite light. It doesn't feel at all unbalanced on my EM1. Um, at the moment, I mean, I've come out today with just two lenses. I've come out with the 12 to 50, which is my go-to lens under normal circumstances, um, and the 30 mil. Um, it's beautifully light and it's compact. Uh, it is made up of um, seven glass elements in six groups, and it has a extra low dispersion element in there. And at the front, it has something called a DSA, I think it's DSA, um, lens element, which um, when you first look at it, uh, you would um, imagine that it's actually a, a concave lens. It looks like a concave lens. In actual fact, it's um, a bit more complicated than that. It's flat in the middle and then thicker at the edges. So it's not actually um, a concave lens. Um, DSA, I don't know of any other lens that uses one, and that's the one right at the very front of the lens, which you can see there.
I've shot a lot of different subjects with it. Um, I was out the other day in my local park hoping to do some photographs of um, horse chestnuts uh, in situ on the ground where they had fallen. Um, for all you British viewers, <laughs> um, we call them conkers. And as a boy, of course, it was a very popular game at school um, to play conkers to see how many victories you could gain. Um, so dangerous that it's been banned now from schools. Crazy. Health and safety. Um, but it was so wet that, um, and I wasn't dressed for getting down on all fours on the ground, so I decided to take some horse chestnuts and leaves and things back home and do a shot um, back in my house, which I did. I'll put some images up for you to have a look at. And um, I took the opportunity to do some focus stacking as well. And really, um, if the camera is mounted on a tripod, uh, focus stacking with this lens in, in a macro setup is absolutely mind-blowing. Well, it's for me, it's mind-blowing anyway. I have yet to try a handheld focus stack shot. Not quite sure how well that's going to stand up, but um, I'm absolutely blown away with the results of it so far. Are there downsides? Yes, there are downsides, obviously. Nothing is perfect in this life. Um, if I were a full-blown macro enthusiast, I would probably um, recommend people go for the 60 mil. Why, I hear you ask. Well, with this, um, you can get so close to the subject. It's really round about um, 25, 30 mil from the front of the lens. Um, ridiculously close. Now that means that if you're going to try and photograph um, bugs, butterflies, whatever it might be, the chances are they're going to get spooked and fly away, crawl away, whatever. Um, that's point number one. The second point is that because um, at maximum magnification you are so close to the subject uh, it's very easy to get your shadow in the frame and to cover the subject matter so additional lighting I think would be called for whether it was a ring light um, or some other form of macro lights I don't know there are plenty on the market but um, for me that would that would be a pain if I were a true macro enthusiast so for that reason, I would suggest the 60 mil because it gives you a greater working distance. However, as I said at the start, the 60 mil for me, too long a focal range for it to be useful as a general purpose lens as well as macro. One other thing I should say, the manual focusing ring, because that's the only other control you have on this lens, is buttery smooth. It's really gorgeous. Um, Another downside I've just remembered. If for any reason when you're doing macro work, you miss the focus point, maybe you've got the focusing point set at the bottom of the screen or the top or left or right rather than in the middle, which I guess is where most people would want it. If the lens does miss focus, it travels a hell of a long way out and in before you get back to focus point. Uh, there's a large movement within the lens elements of this lens. So when that happens, it feels like, oh my God, it's taking ages for it to find focus. In truth, that's probably more um, operator error than any fault with the lens. It's just, it has such a wide range of focus movement inside here that it does take a few seconds to go from one end to the other and back again before it will lock on focus. But when it does, boy, oh boy, it's sharp. Um, I'm not going to try and uh, tell you that it's free of like color fringing, but edge to edge sharpness is really very good. Uh, color fringing, I haven't really looked for, to be honest with you. So maybe I'll put some images up and magnify them so that we can investigate that together. But I've got a feeling if there is any color fringing, it's going to be very minimal. 
And in any case, that's the kind of lens aberration that you can easily get rid of uh, in post-production these days. So there we are, the Olympus 30mm macro. Super little lens, I'm over the moon with it. Join me in the Japanese garden, we'll see what we can come up with there. As you can see, it's a lovely Japanese garden. Not very extensive, but well maintained. And we're just starting to get some of those lovely colors in the foliage. So we've got some stills. Quite how good they're gonna be, I don't know, remains to be seen. Relatively quiet part of the uh, park this, to be perfectly honest, it's tucked away. Not hard to find, but tucked away in a corner. Nice and tranquil area to be in. We have the ubiquitous stepping stones, which of course I've got to try, haven't I? This is where I go A over T, putting it politely. Yay! <laughs> Alan managed something without getting wet. Okay, so Olympus 30mm macro. Great lens, really, really pleased with it. Couldn't ask for better, to be perfectly honest with you. So I think now is the time to head back home, put together these bits of video and some stills and wind up back there. So I'll catch you later. So there we are, um, <clears throat> I'm back home and the 30mm uh, Olympus Macro definitely gets a big thumbs up from me. Um, it makes an excellent macro lens. I mean, uh, 2.5 times magnification is just astounding. Um, and at 30mm, 60mm full frame equivalent, it means that I can use this as a general purpose lens as well. So on the way to Calderstones Park, I stopped off in Sefton Park, which is literally around the corner from where I live. And um, there they had, it is a circus tent. And, uh, so I just grabbed a couple of shots of the uh, actual big top. 
um, and then I've enlarged them left and right just so you've got an idea of the sharpness from edge of frame to edge of frame it's really very very good uh, they also had um, a small fairground on site so there's a couple of um, images there of one of the um, rides the twister I think it's called um, <clears throat> I also, as I mentioned in the video, I did bring some horse chestnuts and dead leaves and things back here to photograph. Um, and I've included a couple of shots, one of a um, single frame to illustrate just how shallow the depth of field is when you're working very, very close to the subject. And then the second one is where it is stacked. Um, and I think both the subjects that I'm showing you are 10 frames. Uh, it's a 10 frame stack, I think. And then the, uh, apart from the horse chestnuts, conkers, uh, the other subject that I photographed is very much a more three dimensional subject. And that is a model, plastic model kit of a World War II era tank. And um, I thought it was worth doing this um, because if you have uh, a hobby that involves making models, whether they be aeroplanes, cars, tanks, whatever it might be, it can be a nightmare to get a realistic looking result because again, to fill the frame, your depth of field is going to be very shallow. Focus stacking makes a huge difference, as I think you'll agree with the um, image of the tank. Is there anything else I need to say? Probably loads. You know what I'm like. I do all this stuff unscripted. So I think to myself afterwards, God damn, I should have said that. Anyway, if I've missed anything out, please leave me a comment down below. And um, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, until the next time, when I have no idea what I'm gonna be talking about, I will say, as ever, Please enjoy your photography. That's the whole purpose of this channel. I wouldn't call this a review. It's my opinion of the 30mm macro lens. There are many more qualified YouTubers out there who give you more technical details about lenses. I'm more concerned about how the lens feels, whether I like it, whether I get on with it, whether it's gonna improve my photography or not. Um, and at the end of the day, that's what this channel is all about. So until the next time, look after yourselves and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.